Hey, hey yo, my song's on. I gotta get my rub on some thought All the three buckets of mama, we getting more dough off the books. You getting jelly? Pulling more holes off the look. You getting jelly? You wanna hate me? Cause your wife be wants an autograph from looking her eyes. I can see she wants more than that. When I see my ass, what is up, everybody? So it is a wonderful Wednesday evening hump day, guys. And let me just adjust the camera just a bit. There we go. Um, and first of all, let me start by saying thank you guys for joining along. Uh, everybody that follows the show, I do appreciate you guys um, being part of this community and everybody who contributes and engages. It's the fun part of what we do here on the show. So thank you so much, guys like I always say. So let's get all the particular information out of the way like we always do, guys. So again, as you can see on the uh, border there, if this is your first time following us, we are streaming live on YouTube. And you can check us out there at the address there at www.youtube.com forward slash the letter C forward slash made from scratch broadcast guys uh do us a favor if you go to youtube and you're watching us there please consider subscribing to the channel we are always trying to build our viewership there and just hit the um notification bell as well it'll let you know whenever we are live it'll also let you know when you schedule new lives and whenever we drop new video content on the channel so if you're watching there like, share, comment. Thank you so much, guys, for watching on YouTube. And, of course, you can check us out on our Facebook page at MFSB Live there as well. Hit the like button. Same sort of deal. It will let you uh, – it will give you – excuse me. <clears throat> it will give you notifications whenever we do go live. So uh, – or whenever we schedule any lives, and you can have actually have the option to uh, set a reminder. So if you're watching on Facebook, you'll get the notification that goes off being – Gabriel Leal is live right now, and you can go click on the broadcast and check us out. So if you're watching us on uh, Facebook, thank you so much, guys. You rock. Um, we are also streaming live on Twitter at MFSB Live there as well. And, of course, on Twitch, same name at MFSB Live as well that we do on Twitch. And we do a separate thing with our Instagram where we actually stream kind of a more intimate feel. Um I stream live so that people can kind of just um, see. Uh, it's more of a like a behind the scenes sort of deal, right? So when I stream live on um, Instagram, it's more of a um, cool sort of uh, feel just to see what I, what what happens in behind the scenes when I'm messing with everything. You don't get to see the actual interview because it's hard to interview on Instagram. So if you're watching on Instagram right now, I'm talking directly to Instagram. Um, and just to let you know, guys, so it's MFSB Live on Instagram. And, of course, guys, we are streaming on our flavor, our favorite platform, of course, LinkedIn, guys. So if you're checking us out on LinkedIn as well, thank you so much. Appreciate you guys for stopping in. And um, it's always a fun, fun thing to do. So um, let me start already. Well, cool. Thank you, Pedro. All right? Intros. <laughs> well, of course, Yeah. It's one of the things that I love to, um, you know, just create a little bit, be a little bit creative with what I do. And, um, you know, that's part of it. It's just um, putting together the whole overlays and everything else. And that's, again, a cool part of being able to create this, um, this whole uh, show, right? It's just to literally um, share what goes on in my mind and put it out there into the world. You guys get to see it. So thank you so much. Um, so let's go ahead and start with this evening's guest. Um, he is a data-driven sales-focused brand story architect collaborating with you to create, uh, co-create brand stories to help your business grow, right? So, um, you know, he is about the, well, I, I love this, making a meaning. Our goal is designed to enrich the lives of business professionals who they work with, who he works with, and ultimately create a more uh, just and caring world. So, um, I'm lucky to have a conversation with this guy. It was really cool to meet him, and I actually met him through a um, LinkedIn Live pop up group that is that he, Russ Johns, and Kenyatta, who is Kenyatta Turner, who's coming on the show later on. Um, put together and it was cool to meet him and then actually have a conversation with him. So guys, help me welcome to the show this evening's guest, Mr. Arthur Jones. Hey How everybody. Hey, I, I'm just happy to be here, Gabe. Uh, <laughs> I, I, 
I, I think that you know how DJs have uh, <laughs> tracks that they put out. Yes. I want those two jams that you start the show with. <laughs> um, it's on fire, man. I really, I really appreciate being on the show, and I am mesmerized by the 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 high high level of uh, entertainment and professionalism mashed up into that intro. I love it. So, and again, it, it is it's the creative touch, right? This is again when I tell people. Um, you have people that like paint for a living who are industrial painters, paint houses, do that sort of thing, right? It's a, it's a um, different sort of skill, right? Yeah. Uh, and then doing something like this, which is almost like another artist who creates uh, creative paintings, right? Stuff that comes out of the mind, the impressionisms and um, all the ways that they can do. I think that's what this is kind of for the digital age. You have people who create for industrial, who do, you know, that's their craft. And you get the people who like me who get to be creative and use a paintbrush to extract all the beautiful stuff that's in my head and put it out into the world. So it's, it's beautiful, man. I think that the thing that I think I, I appreciate about how you do what you do is the fact that in, in the modern world we live in, there's so much stuff going on out there that, you know, it, it when you want attention, you have to break through all the noise and mm -hmm. just the, the, Instagram is my jam over there, over your right shoulder. Up, <laughs> that's and that's the jam that's... on the bread. I mean, <laughs> you got my attention. I mean, come on. I don't need to say what else you got. You got my attention and I want to know. So what else you got? And you can tell me anything you want me to hear right now. <laughs> and, and I think just that one thing is so, right. so creative and so powerful a way of, of breaking through the noise. Yeah, exactly. Right. And it's just another uh, it's another element that adds to what I uh, what I'm enjoying to do in this whole creative process of doing the whole live stream thing. Right. So I my my objective was like really to see people doing interviews. Right. And, and one of the things that I wanted to do was catch attention. So let's think of it like you having your own television station, right? The way you create um, advertising, the way that you create uh, the content that goes out on your channels, right? Yeah. Um, I want it to be a little expression of that. So I, I really put all this stuff together and um, honed in on a way to make me stand out just a little bit more uniquely than somebody else. And um, hopefully that comes across. I, I, I try to... Yeah. I really try to do. Do you remember that movie, The Sixth Sense? It's an old movie now. Mm -hmm. It was um, M. Night Shyamalan who, it, who wrote it. And again, I'm a movie buff. So it was M. Night Shyamalan who wrote it. And it was Bruce Willis and Haley Joel Osment who played the role. And, and Haley, Haley Joel Osment, one of, one of his key lines in that movie was, I see, how did he say it? Uh, I, I see people. I see ghosts or something like that. I see, I see dead people. He said. I see dead people. That's how he said it. Well, <laughs> as a brand storyteller, I see stories wherever I, I look, right? Just yes. like Taylor Joe Osman did in that movie. And the story that I see when I see Gabe is you are a force of nature, man, to be able. I mean, I've been in technology for 30 years and I could not deconstruct. You're like on 16 different channels at the same time. You've got graphics coming in from the left, from the right. Hey, better. And I know that this is just your passion. You have not trained to do this no. for for a lifetime. You've been on you've been live streaming for a year, maybe? Maybe, not even a year. I think I started this at the end of February. Oh my so god. February 23rd was the first time I actually aired a live show. And um, again, it was just the, me in the same position where I'm at now with one light and a camera. And I just started talking. So, hey, man, no, I, I you know, I'm impressed. I, I got to bow down to, to, to your your ability to take an unknown and turn it into something that serves you completely. Um, highly personalized, um, very special. You the bomb. Yeah. So, um, and again, that's the whole thing about it. When I, when I first started doing this, I didn't even know I had a passion for it. Right. Um, I, I had just 
wanted to actually find a way to communicate with people and um, kind of express myself a little bit. I had written blogs and I had done um, stuff previously sharing my ideas and thoughts and that sort of thing, but I'd never done anything to this level of wanting to be on camera. Um, so this was, again, this was a whole new thing for me, but as I got in further and further and further into doing it, I learned that I, I really enjoyed it. It really brought me a sense of direction and it kind of helped me um, focus a lot more in, in the efforts that I was doing to want to learn. So it, it, it's been a, it's been a really great ride. And I got to thank a few people that kind of helped me kind of help funnel that focus. Right. So one of the gentlemen who I connected through you with was Russ Johns. He kind of helped yeah. me. Yeah. He kind of helped me funnel the whole thing about what it actually took to go into putting in a show like this and creating. Right. Um, so I, I really pushed myself and, using the guidance of people like him. And I had a friend, her name is Annie Leap. She's done, she's doing live streams now. She kind of helped me help learn to focus my energies into something um, that was palatable, something that's kind of tangible now where I can create this stuff and make a, make a way to communicate and express myself a little bit better. So this is what I love about what we're doing here because again, you're do the same thing for business people for professionals you go out and you help these people find a creative aspect to what they do right and um i i think that's a whole other thing that we we can go ahead and start talking about a little bit is how did you get into the whole thing of storytelling and, and wanting to do this uh, professionally yourself you know that's that's kind of a journey that um i'm pretty sure has a little bit of a, a long story but i would love to hear it just to kind of because I, I love i love hearing about the creative process in any way shape or form um well it, it is it is that it, it's you know i have a long career um on the sales side of technology um i, I worked for for xerox for for many years and um, i never sold copiers always sold their technology and um you know I began selling uh, with some of the best sales training on the planet because Xerox had that early in, in the early days. And when the products cost $5,000 to sell, you know, I was selling features, function, benefit, objection handle, close, objection handle, close. And I was fairly successful doing that. And that was sales, pure sales. As the products got more expensive, um, they became software and software is, is something you really don't see, you know, when it's $500,000 for software and $500,000 to install it. And it takes a year before it was ready to run. Somebody is going to belly up to the bar and give you a million dollars for something they can't even see for a year. You're selling an idea. Yeah. Right. You're selling an idea and it's, it's an intangible. Right. And, uh, that was a whole different exercise. You, I couldn't use the old sales skills. I had to use more of a consultative kind of skill and say, tell me about your problem and I can tell you how my solution fixes your problem. But I found that if I still did all the talking about what I offered, I didn't make as many sales. But when I, when I did the research of who I was going to talk to or I listened very well, and I think of listening not as just asking you a question and listening. I think it's all the research I do about Gabriel before I even sit across the table from you so I know what question to ask. So then when I sit down to listen, you're, telling, you're filling in the blanks of stuff I already know. And you're validating that the things that I need to know, I, I discovered already. You tell me things I didn't know that fill in the blanks of so the tapestry is built like a quilt. It becomes real for me to see then I could say, so let me see if I understand this correctly. You do blah, 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 and here are the challenges, yada, yada, yada. And if I could show you a way that this makes the pain go away, how does that help your business? But that's after I ask one question, they talk for 20 minutes, and that little line that I lay on them at the end, they either say yes or no. They say, yes, you can help or no, you can't. And what I discovered in that process is that the research was me trying to find out what their story was. The story of the business, 
the story of the decision maker that had the money that I had to convince, what was her story. And, and then it became telling a story that kind of fits seamlessly into their story. The story of my solution, the story of the problem is like, oh, it's not broken anymore. They go together seamlessly. But unless I know their story, my story can go like a missile over their head, right? Yes. So I went from selling to consulting to unwittingly. I didn't know it at the time. It's just what evolved. A lot of listening, a lot of research, a lot of thoughtful figuring out what questions I needed to ask. And then after hearing that question, moving from what implicitly I knew to them telling me explicitly what I needed to know, then I could actually give them the offer of the thing that made their organization, their their themselves or whatever the case was, better. And, you know, when I... I moved on from Xerox and I went to a spinoff of Xerox to a much smaller company. I got even more training. And that I think is when it dawned on me in one sale, I went into, I was living in Southern California at the time and I, I would hop an airplane. I'd land in at Sky Harbor and I mean, in Vegas, I would land and you walk through the airport, the, the slot machines are <laughs> ringing. Right? You're like, man, I love going to Vegas and I'm going to take care of business. So I get the, I, get, I don't get to play, but I get to walk through Playland yeah. to go try to sell something. It was a healthcare organization that I was working with at the time. And they'd walk me into a conference room that was covered in whiteboards. I'd had my systems engineer with me because my systems engineer was always smarter about the technology than I was. I was still a sales guy. But I would go in. I'd done my research. And I'd say, let me see if I understand correctly. And I'm drawing on the whiteboard what I understood correctly and trying to get validation from them. Um, and what's happening while I'm drawing on the whiteboard is saying this dude walked into our conference room now he's drawing pictures on the wall it looked like he's drawing pictures of what my infrastructure my computer systems look like he's done his homework credibility right and so I say you know we'd like to come back and continue the conversation I say, sure we'd like you to have to have you back I fly back to Southern California my engineer and I hop on the plane a couple of weeks later walking through that airport slot machines ringing and lights flashing we're excited and we're wondering what's going to happen when we get to this office. Are they really going to like us as much on the second trip as they did on the first trip? Well, they take us back to that conference room. And on the walls were the pictures that we had drawn weeks earlier. They didn't erase them. I felt like the kid in third grade that brings wow. his kid home from school, right? And look, mommy, look at my picture. My picture was still there. We did that over the course of several months. And that the, the, the walls eventually got covered in this graphical representation of their infrastructure, the problems that they had. I was the artist laying this stuff down, right? And after the sixth visit over several months, at this point, the economic buyer, the guy that's going to spend all this money is in the room. He says, Lart, uh, my people believe that you really know what's going on here. Um, and you've demonstrated that you've got a solution. You haven't told us what we're buying yet. <laughs> And, you know, I could have, my jaw didn't drop. I had to keep my cool, right? What the economic buyer with the money was telling was that we're ready to buy. You can stop talking now. We're convinced that you know our stuff and you've got something that's going to fix our problem. Just tell us what it is so we can get started. And that's a long story about storytelling. That visual story that I painted gave me credibility, established my authority with the customer that I wanted to sell and gave them a way of feeling comfortable enough to spend a million dollars with the company that I represented. And never once, and, and the, the, the thing of the thing that he said that I left out, that's really probably the most important thing. He said, we're convinced, but you haven't, you haven't yet told us what we're buying. And that's the part that, that, they were buying the intangible thing that I had sold them, right? And without a story, and that was several stories knitted together. It was kind of like my, my wife is a quilter, right? And it's like a tapestry. You've got all these little pieces of fabric that when they're laying out on the table, you look at that and you say, wow, the wind blows, this stuff's going to be a mess. But after she takes her artistry and puts it together and you stand back and look at it, she's like, wow, that's, 
awesome. Look at how beautiful it flows together, the colors match. Storytelling is the same way, but it's often not just one story. It's your story and the story of all the people in the organization that you're trying to sell to, the story that's the narrative of the business itself, right? The story of my products, right? The story how my products, my products have evolved, that's another story. The story of the customers I've already served that are similar to them that I can tell. And you mash that all up, right? You've got one heck of a story. And if you tell it well, it, it seamlessly comes together where it dovetails and, and they get it. Yeah. When you don't do that, it's telling stories. It's like missiles over people's heads. <laughs> you're, just, you're just making noise. So storytelling is, is more than Hansel and Gretel, right? Yeah. It's, it, I look at it this way, Gabe. I've, over the years, I've taken that lesson because I didn't even know I was doing storytelling then. I was just doing what I did. Now, in hindsight, looking back, I'm saying that was some badass story you were telling, right? <laughs> yes. And, and I've broken it down into four story categories. There's story listening, story yes. building, story telling, and story selling. The yes. story listening is the biggest part. I do that in my office. I haven't even approached the customer yet. I'm doing the research. And now, with uh, all the channels that we have the potential to be on, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, Tumblr, our blog, your own interviews. You can find out a lot about a person before you even look them in the eye. Exactly. I like, and, and, and you know, just to bring in a comment that some of the people say, Enrique, you know, I love what he has to say here. He says, you have to sell experience and use emotion and sales. Storytelling is critical. It yes. is absolutely critical, right? And that's such an important thing. And even Howard is, you know, saying establishing a comfort level is such an underrated component in a selling situation you know and that's kind of what yeah. you were talking about in, in the whole in the whole travels of, of creating a story when you're doing it for a business and that's what i love um that you've done that and let me just say a quick shout out to a few people i mean we've had quite a bit show up so joseph Mulry, thank you so much uh kdj he is everywhere i don't know if you're connected with him but please do uh and it's please send out a connection howard uh, of course, uh, has been on the show. He's he's helped start his own um, company as well. He does uh, uh, oral oral care oral care products, right? That he does uh, mostly uh, organic and, and homeopathic based. So it's really cool. He sent me some products, Howard. I did receive them. They're pretty awesome as well. Um, of course, just wanted to say to LinkedIn user. I don't know. I think this this is a buddy of mine. His name's Nick Lozano. For some reason, he just shows up as LinkedIn user. But hey, I know who he is. And then, of course, tomorrow evening's guest is actually here commenting as well. Her name is Saima Dehillian. She is a uh, she has a Facebook group. She also does a few live streams. So we got a lot of people. And of course, this woman here, Fanny Dunnigan, she is actually in. Um, she does, of course, live streams as well. But she tells you tips and stuff about. Uh, sales, business, HR. I mean, she's really um, tuned into what she does. And then, of course, a um, few more people just want to say hello to who stopped by. You guys are awesome. Of course, uh, Travis Lashner, thank you so much. Um, and again, uh, Pedro, excuse me, he was asking a few questions. I will get to you, Pedro, um, answer your questions about what I use. I'll, I'll kind of share that with you a little bit later. I'll send you a private message just so you can figure out. And of course, Jason Leibowitz. Awesome. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, here's another guy who contributes all the time. Senor Paseala. Hey, yo, hey, yo, okay. Let's get that right. I got to work on it still. So of course, um, this woman here, she's pretty incredible. Uh, let me just give her, where's her, there she is. So she was, it was a couple of gentlemen, a few uh, last weekend who actually did a, 24 hour live stream on LinkedIn, right? Wow. Uh, <laughs> right. Wow. So, talk about storytelling. You had 24 hours to fill um, telling stories. So, um, their names, exactly, right? So, the gentleman's name are Luke Matthews and, and Jonathan Palmar. And um, this woman here followed their whole stream the whole 24 hours as well. So, she was. Wow. Of, <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly, right? So, that's what I would call her. Whoa. Um, 
<laughs> and of course, um, here's a few things that we learned about LinkedIn. Like there's so many comments that you can do in a day before they'll ban you for, for posting comments anywhere. So there's a limitation on it and there's a number of amounts and she kind of, we started a whole private group um, because a lot of these people had been following this whole stream, had been commenting all day, right? And then it finally got to the point where they just couldn't comment anymore and they got pretty much banned from commenting is what it was. So- um, <laughs> Overwhelmed LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelmed LinkedIn and of course, uh, Love this, Howard. More important than ever, as many clients have pushed more to um, work to the vendor, the, um, the more you can inspire the imagination of your customer. You have created an ad. You've created an, an advocate for you during complex buy a, a complex buying environment too. So yeah, sure. You know, he kind of knows. Again, he's he's doing it. Um, he's living it. He's practicing. He's doing it by trying to again do his own sort of. Um, a product that he's actually uh, helped, uh, and he had other people that he kind of explained it, helped him get it to that point to create it. But again, that's what they're doing, man. Is um, and I love that. So this is what again, somebody who can put together the whole storytelling process um, and can do it and help again, this help build a, a, a business or help um, sell or teach people. I mean, do you also coach people and how to? do the art of selling and storytelling and kind of to make it a cohesive project? I mean, do you do this sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I've been coaching solopreneurs and small businesses um, for the last couple of years. Um, I'm pivoting to include medium-sized businesses now, kind of moving back up the food chain. But I, I love the work that I do because, um, you know, there's five stories. There's the origin story, which is our story. And, and what I discover is that when you, because I see story, right? When I talk to somebody, I, I will mind map their story. And then at the end of like a half hour of them talk, talk me asking the questions and them talking about themselves, I, I can show them the mind map and show the connections from when they were a little person in grammar school, when they talked about their grandmother to what they were doing today. And I can draw an arrow and say, what they learned there, they're applying here, and they're like, wow, I never thought about it that way, but that's so true. It's their story, but I can see it where they can't. And and it's not changing their story as much as it's really just unleashing it. And it, it's, it's for me, it's that moment where I show them whose shoulders they're standing on. They know a lot about that, but then they had forgotten that their grandmother had told them that story. And they still live by that credo today, right? or their college roommate had done something special for them once and showed them some real appreciation. And they now show the same kind of appreciation whenever they get something from someone. And, and those things that we incorporate into ourselves that we just do and we think we just do them, it's often they're connected some moment in time that when we acknowledge those moments and we take them in total, we see that we've got a beautiful bouquet of powerful relationships that have taught us lessons that we use today that can be like arrows in our quiver that help us accomplish things tomorrow. But you have to you have to acknowledge them. You have to recognize them in order to use them well. And that origin story work that I do uh, is probably the most gratifying because from there you go to the founding story, the things you discover in the origin story you use, you don't you might have 15 things you discover about yourself powerful things, lessons learned, mentorship that you've had, right? Academic training that you've had, work experiences that you've had, and you take them all and say, I see something broken in the world over there. I'm going to start a business to fix that. Of these 15 things that I know about myself, how many of them do I need to go fix that? Maybe you just pull five. That's all you need. And one of them is having the ability to get a great team around you, plus the other four and these are waiting in the wings. You'll use them, the other, the other 10, but these five are mission critical to you founding the company to fix what you saw broken in the world. Then you do your customer story, and that's probably the most important one. That's knowing their narrative almost as well as they do. That's what empathy is. Mm. And in business, they call it emotional intelligence, right? Yes. If you do the work to know me so well, 
that you know what I celebrate when I'm popping champagne and you know what I'm waking up at two o'clock in the morning and I can't sleep and I'm doing my brow like this, if you know what those things are and your problem can keep me from fretting at 2 a.m., when you tell me your story about that thing, I'm gonna go 2 a.m. worried about what? And you've got a fix for it? What? I'm leaning in because yeah. your story resonates with me. My ears perk up. Um, that's origin story, founder story, customer story. After you've got those three, now you can tell your product story. Because after you know your customer, you know what product story, how it's going to insert itself into their story. Exactly, man. And I love that, right? And again, it's cool that you're you're doing that where you're scaling up to mid-sized businesses now. I think, um, again, the experiences that you've had in the past have helped you get to this point. And um, maybe there's, I mean, you're doing it now. So I'm pretty sure even at this point, you're learning more and more about the process because you're doing it with bigger companies now you're doing it and figuring it even though the even though you kind of have it um, mapped out right is, is it is it presenting like new uh challenges for you as far as taking it up to the next scale and even thinking about going to a large company have you thought about doing something like that yet no i have and i i think it's it's what the world needs now especially here in the in in the pandemic because we're not going into an office anymore. I don't get the warm handshake. I don't get to sit in somebody's office and see the photos of their children on the, I, I don't build relations like relationships the way we have in selling in the past. So we've got to be able to get attention like that LinkedIn's my jam toast that, that I want, right? That's, that's deep. And we have to get attention like that. And we want to get it in a way where we stand out because when we talk to someone and we know something about them that we've researched to discover and we start the conversation that way, they, they kind of lean in and say, okay, dude has done some work. And she then gives me a little credit, but gives me a few more minutes of her time because I've done the work. And, and that goes back to what I was saying earlier, Gabriel, and it's the idea that the story listening, building, telling and selling, if it was a pie, story listening is probably 60 cent, 60 percent of the pie mm. you haven't talked to anybody you're doing all the work in that listening slice of that pie story building is probably 20 25 percent of the puzzle because implied versus explicit if i sit in my bubble here in my office and i say well gabe he's a dude he's in texas i know he's liking technology i know he's got four kids I know exactly what he wants because I know those. that's the implication, mm. right? If yes. I say, Gabe, tell me about your family. And do you, do you have a minivan or do you still have a sports car? I'm going deep into who you really are to move from implication, what I think I know about you, to explicitly what you tell me about you. Mm. When I do the research, to know what questions to ask, to fill in the tapestry, I move from implied to explicit. Nobody ever buys anything from you because you know their implied need. Ooh. Never. I like if you that. think you know me, don't, doesn't mean you know me. Don't, don't like approach that. me and say, you know, dude, you got a gray and black shirt on. You must like gray and black shirts. I got a, I got one right here. Uh, no, this is the only <laughs> shirt like this I've got. This is a one-off, right? Don't, don't think you know me because you did a little work. What I just described is like 80% of the puzzle. I've never even talked to the person in any depth. The, 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 the building part is where you collaborate with your customer to co-create the story that you want to tell. Because Gabe, if you're just like all my other ideal customers and I have a better relationship with you because you're already a customer, I can say, Gabe, you know, you're my VIP customer because everybody that I sell to is just like you. And you know, I've come to you in the past when I've had new product and I wanna tell you about this product I've got and the story that's associated with it. You got a minute? I tell you the story and you say, Art, that's a really deep story, that's great. But you know, if you're really trying to sell the product you described and that story, there's two other things that I think you mentioned that you can go deeper into that really rock my world that I really need to hear. Now explicitly through that conversation with my VIP customer, I've refined my story by collaborating. It's been co-created by one of my ideal customers and me. When I turn to the 
other thousand people just like you that need the same product? I'm telling them a story that because I've defined my customers so well that they're just like you. When I tell them they're all like another product from art, he's rocking our world, he's telling our story, I'm singing his song, right? Because you gotta do the work. And, and, and we don't do it in a bubble because if we do, we'll get embarrassed because we think we know what the customer wants. That empathy and emotional intelligence says you do the work to collaborate, to co-create the story. Then telling it, it's just marketing it. That's easy. Push the button, get the message out there, create the video, boom. Selling it is when you're at the close and you, you know, theoretically you can you can do the story telling, and they're gonna say it resonates so well. Where do I sign? Yeah. If you have to story sell it, then you're giving a relatable story of someone else just like them that used the same product. They say, oh, okay, I get it. It really is for me. I'm I'm ready to go now. I love that. And even like what Enrique has to add, he says, we have to get about we have to get out of our sales comfort zone, right? The parameters have changed with this pandemic, right? right. Yeah. And it's to your point what you're talking about. It's it's changed so much. And even it, you know, the people you buy from, if they trust and know you, that's the bottom line, right? I mean Hey, it if if there's I, I call it the four T's of storytelling. When you tell your story, you tell the origin story. When I tell my story, the customer looks at me and says, Art, you've been selling the coaches and, and small businesses. Why should I listen to you here? I'm a big business. I got 5,000 employees. What do you know about me? I tell them my origin story. I can go back to when I was working at the enterprise, companies bigger than them, and tell that story without making them feel small. Mm. Right? When they hear my truth, my, my origin story is my truth. When I tell my truth, I earn their trust. When I earn their trust, I can build their tribe of people just like them. And when I trust the truth, the trust, the tribe, I will get testimonials. That's the four T's of storytelling. I, and I think you, you've kind of just broke down the same sort of deal with personal branding. It's the same sort of deal. It's the same thing with networking. You just explained everything <laughs> with it's, the four T. Hey, Gabe, it's KLT, what I call KLT, right? KLT? Yeah. No like and trust. That, ah, <laughs> I like that. that needs, no like and trust. That needs to be an acronym hashtag. I like that. I because knew you would it, like it, man. It's, it's, <laughs> it, 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 what it's, in it's meaning, when people kind of will, will want to know what it means because again if you break it down into an acronym that's the first thing to ask what does it mean yeah. right and i'll say it and then, and then you kind of explain it to them i don't i don't know what and i think the next time i tune into your show there's going to be another piece of toast on the other <laughs> side that's klt what's that klt right? <laughs> that's going to be a hashtag we're going to start using because again um <laughs> thank you matthew yes i appreciate that uh, but again i like that really do because again it it gets that this is what I tell people. You want to, just like the toast here is catching everybody's attention. Using a hashtag like that, people want to know. They're going to gonna go, what does that mean? And then when you tell them, you can go into the storytelling part about it. It's, what, it's like it's permission marketing. You say something that's kind of interesting, <laughs> curiosity, and then you earn their, you've gotten their permission to tell them the entire story Yeah. Of, of what it is. It's like, you know, I say I've got the four T's of story. Four T's of story, Art, what do you mean? Well, it's truth, trust. Testimony, I mean, truth, trust, tribe, and testimonials. There's four P's too, but I'll save that for another show. <laughs> <laughs> we will have to dig into it again. So just, uh, of course, I want to give a few more shout outs to people who've been jumping in. That's, again, uh, Enrique, thank you so much. Your comments have been very, very well placed. I, I love it when people get that sort of engagement. Yeah, yeah. no, Enrique's got it, got it going on. And then, of course, Matthew, uh, buddy, thank you so much for joining. I Appreciate and again, I appreciate everybody who's been a part of this one. So, Art, before we get out of here, um, a few things I want to cover with you. Uh, you have a the Story Power Workshop. Kind of walk us a little bit what that is and uh, and how people can probably reach out to you. And, and well, yeah, the, the Story Power Workshop is is taking those um, those five stories, the origin story, right? The the, the founder story, the customer story, the product story, and the evolution story, and breaking it down and doing it over five weeks, right? And 
because you, you got to let these ideas marinate yeah. a little bit, right? So separating them by a week at a time, you can go deep on your own about your story. And uh, so we're going to start those in November and we'll start one um, on the, the, the first weekend in November and then we'll start one on the next week. And so we'll have them going in order throughout the rest of this year. So um, it's conceivable that we'll have eight of them, some of them going into next year. But it's a great way to finish the year and start strong in the new year with a clear notion of, you know, your, your origin story. I, I liken it to the arrows in your quiver. You get them all organized and ready to go. So when you go on the hunt, right, you, you have them. You don't have to use them all. But when you're ready and you need them, they'll be there for you, yes. um, those stories. Oh, and I love that. And that's, again, um, that is a cool way. And I will drop it in the comments, guys, if you want to reach out to Arthur. Uh, you can check out the website, and I'll also put his LinkedIn if you want to connect with him as, there as well, because this is where I love to send all the people to networking, because a lot of these people that are part of my tribe here and part of this community are, a lot of them are for LinkedIn. So I love the platform very much and what they share. So, Arthur, this is the part of the interview where I get to ask the money question. This is the same question I've asked every single guest that comes on the show. Okay. So it goes like this. Um, so when a book is said and done on Arthur Jones, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? And what do you want to be remembered for? Um, I want to be remembered for uh, first making meaning in other people's lives my priority. Um, and that I believed in miracles. Mm. I, <laughs> that's, I, that's, I, it. that's it. That's all you need. Again, this, and this is what I tell everybody. Sometimes some of the most simplistic answers are the one that is so poignant to just think about. I love that. It's simple. And again, that's why I love the hashtag you said, right? So yeah. if you start seeing that hashtag pop up, and <laughs> I will remember let people know that tag Arthur Jones and go check him out because he was the one kind of explaining it to me. Not, that's how much I, I really love how, it, again, how it plays out. And, and um, I, I've got one for you, Gabe. What's that? I, I know I can check you out on spot. You're on Spotify, right? Yes. I, I want the playlist. I want to be able to, <laughs> I want to be able to listen to the playlist on Spotify. Your, your intro. Yes. It's the bomb. I like that so much. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> And again, um, it's my creative style. These are like, this is kind of the, the I, I love the whole 85. Um, so that was hip hop, all, I mean, everything that was part of, because that's what I grew up in and that's what I grew to love. And yeah. I think it's kind of cool to just kind of retroly introduce that stuff to a lot of people. So, man, I had I like a it, brother. I, I, like I, it. I appreciate it so much, Arthur. It was a really good conversation. And of course, I want to give love to everybody who's been there, part of this one, guys, uh, especially to my VIP group. You guys are incredible. Um, it, it, it's it's uh, It's been mind-blowing making these new connections. So thank you guys who've all come and been a part of this one. Of course, all the regulars who follow, Lori, you're here all the time. I appreciate the heck out of you. Yeah. I can't wait to get a, have a conversation, Lori, as well. So. All right, Art. Right. Thank you so much again, Amen. everybody. Thank you, brother. Um, Appreciate it. Just, just tight real quick. Nice and I will uh, just want to have a few words with you. Everybody else, just so you know, we'll be back here tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel, 730 Central Standard Time. Stay, stay, stay blessed. And um, Cheers, everybody. everybody. Good night. <laughs>